Welcome into the In the Money podcast for KeenelandSelect.com for opening day of the fall meet, Friday, October 7th at Keeneland. I'm Tom Leach, along with Jim Goodman, Keeneland's Director of Mutuals and Simulcasting. And we're going to take a look at the two graded stakes on the Friday card, plus a late pick four. And we'll do this throughout the fall meet here at KeenelandSelect.com. A couple of reminders for you on the big Saturday card. There's a guaranteed $250,000 all-stakes pick five on Saturday. It begins in the fifth race with the first graded stakes race. And also on Saturday, a guaranteed $350,000 all-stakes pick four beginning in the sixth. So just keep that in the back of your mind when you start handicapping for Saturday. Jim, let's jump right into it with the grade two, Stahl, Keenan, Ogden, Phoenix, the eighth race on the Friday card. Got a big favorite in there in AP Indian. Can you meet him? Uh, I don't think so. I think he scratched out of Belmont race last weekend uh, because they like the spacing of this race, getting him ready for Breeders' Cup. He's four to five morning line, and I think that's probably what he's going to go off at. He's won four in a row, and nobody's touched him in um, in New York, either Belmont or Saratoga. He won the four go by two and a half over some nice horses, including a stall walking dude. Uh, he's beaten Holy Boss in the past. I, I just don't see anybody in here. Uh, I, I'm going to single him in the pick four, and he's won his last four. There's not really much reason to go against, but if you're looking for alternatives, you could do a lot worse than horse that you liked last year here at Keeneland in the spring in the Commonwealth. It's called a Mies Flatter, and uh, that horse was working great then, and, and, and I think uh, you had seen the works or had heard about the works, and, uh, and he won it four to one in the Commonwealth. He, he's kind of dropped off a little bit since then, but if he, if he repeats that 105 buyer here at Keeneland, he always liked to bet horses that liked the course. So I mean, he's flatter, uh, ran the race his life last spring, and, and if he repeats that, he's got a shot. Limousine Liberal, the five, also has a win over the course this past spring, and um, I think uh, could be well drawn to track the inside speed. So. All right, I'm going to take AP Indian as well. I couldn't figure out a way to go against him. I, I did actually last week pick against him up at uh, at Belmont, but in, in this field I, I couldn't couldn't find enough of a reason. His last two buyers are better than anybody else's. Um, if he were to get beat, Amis Flatter, Limousine Liberal, two horses that have run big on this track I think would be the ones. But uh, AP Indian is a, a strong pick for me in the Phoenix as well, and um, he probably could play him uh, straight on top of Exactus. Grade one, Darley Alcibiades for two-year-old fillies at a mile and a 16th is the ninth race. And this one's a little more interesting handicapping challenge. Who'd you, who'd you go yeah, for? Yeah, so. It's hard. This, this one's tough. It, the two-year-old races are always tough. You don't know who's going to improve. Um, I, I've, got, I've got five horses in here. Um, I'm going to give you my top five. But in the pick four, I would likely go deeper, especially as I could narrow down one of the other races uh, in addition to the AP Indian race. I went with Dream Dancing here, um, the eight horse, and I'm, I'm just assuming that she didn't like the muddy track at Churchill last out. Uh, it, it was really, um, it was really muddy on, on the, in the Pocahontas, and uh, you know, Daddy's little darling did like it, obviously. And I'm just going to say that Dream Dancing might be a little bit better, will be a lot better on a fast on a fast track. She hasn't she hasn't run on a on a dirt track before that's fast. She, she came off the turf. I really liked her in the Pocahontas, but she obviously did not take to the track. So I'm going to take her on top. Going to use Daddy's little darling. Uh, he obviously, she obviously did like the mud. Um, McPeak uh, tried to get her on the turf at Ellis, but she rolled by eight on the dirt when they took it off the turf. So stuck to dirt is probably a good idea. So she picked up a great stakes win in, in Churchill. Um, the others all have question marks. Deodura, the 11, for Michael Stidham. Ran two really good races at, at Arlington Park, but that's poly track. So how does that transfer over to dirt? Um, the one horse fun for uh, for Wilkes. I think uh, she ran a really nice, a really nice race two back at Saratoga in the Shotterville and uh, finished second to Sweet Loretta, who came back and won. So uh, didn't run that well in the spinaway, but uh, I think I think she's got a shot just because she's faced tougher tougher competition. Um, and then the other the other horse that I used was um, was the ten horse Benner Island, um, mostly because of Brad Cox. He's like thirty five percent at Indiana Grand right now, and just hotter than a firecracker. This horse again ran on the in the um, Arlington Washington Lassie last time out on the synthetic, and you don't know how that'll transfer. But uh, he uh, she did have a race at Indiana where she broke her maiden first time out. So Benner Island would be my fifth choice. That's the five I'm going to take. 
but I could certainly make a case for any of the horses you're going to name because I know we're not on the same five. Well, we are on the same winner, same for the same reasons. <laughs> I ended up going to Dream okay. Dancer too. Uh, I thought uh, I liked her actually in the Pocahontas, and I'm going to say that she didn't like the mud. I like that Jeru stays aboard as well. I thought that was encouraging, and uh, Mark Cassie looks like has a really strong group of two year olds in his barn. So, uh, Dream Dancing for me. <sighs> Fun is one that I like. Um, you know, when an Ian Wilkes horse wins first time out, you know there's some ability there. Uh, this Lady Hanson, I, I think, has a lot of talent. Uh, she's had issues getting out of the gate, but uh, I think there's a lot of talent there, and horses coming out of those Kentucky Downs races are always good and fit. Uh, Dancing Rags for Graham Motion, the four intrigues me a little bit, and Queen Bernardina uh, won at 20-1 to 1 at Churchill, and now they put her right into a grade one stake, and uh, it's uh, not a normal move for, for this trainer. So a bold move usually equals confidence. So I'm going to take all five of those and not a real strong opinion, but dream dancing is, is going to be the win pick for me. Uh, let's go to the late pick four, which starts in the seventh. And I'm going to spread a little bit there. Quiet business was the one I picked for Rusty Arnold, but I liked uh, in charge of me and tis jeweled walking the kittens, probably the one you got to beat. And then uh, moonlight sky, or Cassie, and Race Ispa, uh, I will include as well. So that's six horses. I suspect one or two of those uh, will get scratched, but uh, we'll leave it at six for now. I'm going to single AP Indian. In the Alcibiades, I'm going to take four of the five that I mentioned. I'm going to leave out Dancing Rags and take the eight, uh, one, five, three. And then in the last race, I'm going to take the uh, the one, one A entry. I think either one of those could win. Uh, the six, one kind of crazy, Chris Block, always dangerous, Comes in, wins some nice races at, at good prices often out of Chicago. So that one intrigues me a little bit. The two uh, Remember Mists and the three Summer Spice are other ones I like. So I'm going to go six by one by four by four. But I think that ticket will get a little cheaper because I suspect one or two of those will scratch in the first leg. How about you? Yeah, the first leg, um, five of those horses come out of races at Kentucky Downs. And they were running down there. You know, for one hundred thirty thousand uh, dollars, and now they come back and you know, unfortunately, run McKeelan for for sixty two thousand, and uh, they none of them won at Kentucky Downs, but a lot of them ran well, and I really like Emma Colola, the one horse um, that that actually finished second, got beat by three quarters of the length in a mile race at Kentucky Downs, and goes from uh, uh, Boyce to Alvarado, big jock change there. So Emma Colola is my top choice there. But I would also use uh, Walking the Kitten, the 10, Quiet Business, the 8. Rusty Arnold kind of worries me that he didn't get this horse ready to go at Kentucky Downs. I don't know why you'd skip Kentucky Downs after running at Ellis back in July. Maybe there were some issues, but uh, he likes to win at Keeneland, so he's got that winning streak going. So, And then the um, the sixth horse, in charge of me, uh, only two starts, and broke the maiden last out Delaware, lots of upside for Shug McGahee. So I would use the 1, 6, 8, 10 there. Single AP Indian, the one horse in the 8. In the Darley Alcibiades, I would use the five horses that I talked about, the 1, 8, 10, 11, 14, with Dream Dancing being my top choice. And in the last leg, uh, I got five of them. I, I kind of wound up the odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. I don't know how it worked out. I didn't, I didn't really plan it that way. But I'm like you, the Ramsey entry is probably my top choice. Singleton, the seven, uh, is, is my second choice. Uh, Nick Zito, uh, not the trainer he used to be, but this horse seems to have a lot of ability. And uh, rate for me the nine, um, the five, Chase and Charlie, and the three, Summer Spice. Uh, those five horses, one, three, five, seven, nine. So I am four by single by five by five. Best of luck on your opening day wagers at Keeneland. Remember, five stakes races, including three grade ones on the Saturday card and then the grade one spinster to wrap up Fall Stars weekend on Sunday. So, Great opening weekend. Uh, should be nice weather. Hope to see you out at Keeneland. If you can't make it, wager here at KeenelandSelect.com. For Jim Goodman, I'm Tom Leach, and we'll be back tomorrow with another edition of the In the Money podcast.